You're listening to Following On here on TalkSport 2 with me, Neil Manthorpe, alongside former England fast bowler Steve Harmison. And if you missed any of the show or you wish to catch up, you can download the podcast, as always, from the Following On feed, available from the free TalkSport app or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, as one series comes to an end, or at least the result does, England going down uh, 3-1 to India with a test to play, we have another one to look forward to, and it is the mouth-watering prospect of uh, the Trans-Tasman rivalry. New Zealand will be hosting Australia in a couple of test matches in the World Test Championship and uh, our old friend and colleague Daniel McCarty joins us late at night from New Zealand to look forward to uh, a series. Many, many talking points, Dan. What are you most looking forward to? And great to see you, by the way. Yeah, and you fellas. Uh, absolute treat to be back on uh, the programme with you and I hope you're doing all right. Uh, I, I'm just looking forward to seeing Australia in New Zealand playing Test cricket. Um, it just doesn't happen often enough. 2016 was the last time the base and reserve, the sort of home of New Zealand cricket, got to see these two sides uh, play. Uh, and the other thing, I'm, it's not what I'm looking forward to, I'm hoping for that New Zealand can actually find find a way to show their true selves when they play their, their big brother across the, uh, the Tasman because, unfortunately, far too often, uh, New Zealand seem to have a bit of a mental block against the Aussies, and hopefully 2024 can be a little bit different. Speaking about the uh, the best of, of New Zealand, one player who I think there's a question mark on his fitness, but also a little bit on his form. He's a fantastic player, Devin Conway. Are you expecting him to be fit? Is he? Is there a question on his place? His form has been a little bit, you know, up and down. But at first and foremost, are we expecting Devin Conway to be fit? Well, I, I had the luxury of actually seeing Devin Conway at a function just uh, a few hours ago, and he gave me one of those looks, quizzical looks. We were at uh, uh, the official welcome of the Australians and New Zealanders at Premier House with the Prime Minister. Um, and, and I was pointing towards his left thumb, Harmy, uh, that had a sort of a, a black cast over it, just the thumb itself. Uh, and he gave me the old sh- the sort of uh, you know wobble of the head to suggest it wasn't looking too good. I finally got to chat to him, and he actually used the words 50-50, um, which would be alarming to New Zealand because De- Devin Conway needs to be at his best, not Devin Conway of the last three or four months. It was actually against... England in the World Cup, Harmy, that magnificent 150-odd, I'm sure you all remember. But from then on in, he has really battled. And it was only in the first T20 international, what, just a few days ago, that he scored his first half century in any form of the game since. So in, in, in all likelihood, if New Zealand are to beat Australia, you can't help but vision, uh, envision uh, Devin Conway playing a significant role in that. So A, we need him fit, and B, we need him back to form. Yeah, if he's not fit or if he's not back to form, there's also a question mark on Blundell. Do they then bring a, a batter mm. in who's in form and does potentially Tom Latham have to take the gloves? Well, well, uh, they would have uh, Tom Latham very much in their, in their thinking as far as that is concerned. But um, t- Tom Blundell is going to stay in the middle order. The good thing about the batting cover this time, they've actually got a... Well, I wouldn't call him a specialist, but by the fact that he's uh, you know heated the court so often, Will Young... He, he would naturally slide into the top of the order if Devin Conway's uh, unavailable. So uh, there'd be, be no duress really on Tom Latham to, to keep, thankfully, and uh, Blundell can stay in the middle order. Uh, I, I think there's a very good argument that Will Young should play in this lineup, batting at number six. I, I look at that Australian side and I just see the strength in that bowling lineup. And, and this is no disrespect to that Australian top six, the current one, but it, it doesn't strike the fear of strike fear in your heart of some of the Australian top sixes we've seen over the years. The West Indies might have exposed a soft underbelly in that lineup, but but how do you cope with a bowling attack with every single one of that, you know, the four horsemen of the apocalypse with 400, what, 250 wickets plus? Um, the New Zealand batting versus the Australian bowling always seems to, to be the vital element of these series, and, and, and I don't think it brings any truer than this one. Dan, one man who hasn't uh, produced his best form against Australia, one of a couple actually, is Kane Williamson, the skipper. Mm. Um, presumably having filled his boots against South Africa's village team um, with uh, with 300s, and uh, he'll he'll be feeling um, ready to, to finally show his best against Australia. And also, I just love the story about him playing his 100th test at the same time as Tim Southey. They played their 50th mm-hmm. together as well, didn't they? Yeah, they did indeed, and they'll join the likes of Taylor, Fleming, McCullum, Vittori, and that, that select uh, group of New Zealanders reaching 100 tests. It's a long slog for New Zealanders to, to reach 100 tests. We, don't, we just don't play often enough, the purists on this side of the world would say, but 
You're right, Kane Williamson. Um, hasn't been in vintage form. He took New Zealand to Australia in 2019 and really struggled. Um, really struggled as that team sort of fractured apart when their confidence should have been sky high as they were exposed. Uh, but he has just been in serene form. In fairness, man, as he got 400s against South Africa. Uh, he got three in the test and also one in a session. Uh, j- j- <laughs> just for laughs. Uh, j- just for laughs. O- on a very slow surface, guys. Um, he was gesticulating the whole innings. He wasn't happy with himself, but guess what? The guy ends up with 100. But my new favourite, Cade Williamson, stat is the last time he was dismissed between 50 and 100 harm. He talked about conversion rates. was back in February 2020. Wow. Um, the, the only time he's uh, got past 50 and not, not got on to, to make 100, he was 52 not out in the World Test Championship final. He's got 11 hundreds and four double hundreds in that time. He scored over 2,000 runs in that time. He, he is, and I know you guys have seen him. You saw him at the Basin Reserve score a, a brilliant 100 um, against England in that epic game in February 2023, which was on TalkSport. Um, New Zealand is just is lapping it up. We know time is not on his side. He's just he's just the picture of serenity, and hopefully he can get back to scoring runs against Australia. He scored runs against the Manners. He scored 100 in Australia, uh, and, and we just hope that he's uh, able to ca- ca- carry on this quite quite ridiculous form that we've got to enjoy over the last two or three years, especially now 32 Test hundreds. Like me as growing up as a cricket fan, um, I, I would have told you you were barking mad if we were going to have one New Zealander reach 20 test match hundreds. This guy's now got 32 and 98 tests. Yeah, it's amazing. He is a, a wonderful player. We had the pleasure of having him on our show um, a couple of months ago. And as good a player as he is and a good a person as he, he is, he's yeah. obviously even better. He was a brilliant guest for us and we thanked him for coming on. And we said we wish you well in the in the, you know, in the foreseeable future. And he, to be fair, he's not looked back. He's been absolutely brilliant. And somebody else who's not looked back, you know, how, how about Ratchan Ravinda? You know, I, I, we've seen him on talk sport for the first time when um, I think New Zealand were in Pakistan. I think he batted number seven. He was the second choice spin bowler. Then Durham tried to sign him. I remember Durham tried to sign him and then it, was, it went on hold. It went on ice and he couldn't play. Then he did play, got a double hundred for Durham. So yeah, he's in, he's in ridiculous form after the World Cup as well. Well, uh, you know, my hometown bias to Wellington um, is generally strong. It's been particularly strong with this player since really I first laid eyes on him. Uh, there was so much noise coming through the Wellington junior ranks. Wellington, despite by its geography and climate, it's rubbish before Christmas. You know, club cricket is played on artificial tracks most of the time. Have not had a history of developing international batsmen. But this guy is just, um, he's frighteningly good. Uh, for a number of years, he was teasing us. He'd score the most magnificent 40, 50 or 60. You could just see it. You could just see it. And it was just a, it was always just a matter of time. And he just exploded onto the uh, the cricketing world at that World Cup. Uh, New Zealand uh, failed to make the most of that momentum. Bizarrely didn't pick him for a test series in Bangladesh, where I, I think he had an argument to actually start ahead of us. So he's just a frontline spinner. But thankfully, uh, sanity has prevailed. Um, Henry Nichols had to make way after a lean patch, a long lean patch, particularly away from home. And while a sign of a quality player is getting a chance, and he came in and scored 240 um, against um, Manus' village uh, South African attack, who in fairness, Manus, I, I, I thought, you know, battled bravely, didn't give much away, um, and, and it was still hard work for R- Ravindra. And uh, we just hope it's, it, it, it's sort of the past, the present, and the future with him and Williamson in the same lineup, and only uh, New Zealanders can dream of two world class batsmen. It hasn't happened much over the years. Well, I have to say that uh, New Zealand played brilliantly against a, a South African team that did try hard, but uh, the result is exactly what South Africa mm. deserved. Um, for yeah. uh, the maladministration, but that's another story uh, for another time. For now, <laughs> for now, Dan, it's been a brilliant to, to talk to you and to see you again. Enjoy the series. Uh, I, I'm sure you will, and. Um, you know who everyone in England will be supporting, don't you? <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly, very much. And we can feel that love. I, I, I'll, I'll finish off. I just hope New Zealand can, can reveal their true selves in front of Australia. You know, the, New Zealand's had a proud history against Australia. I think the early 80s to 90s, we beat them four times at home, won a series away from home. But the last 10 test matches since we last won a test in New Zealand in 1993, 
it's nine nine losses and one draw in a game we were following on in. And thankfully, the Wellington weather revealed its true self. So New Zealand cricket fans are just desperate uh, uh, j- just to see a victory against Australia again on our shores. So, so hopefully we're celebrating alongside you when that happens at some stage in the series, we hope. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker.